Where are you from? Which province are you from, man? What language do you speak? My name is Jizzle. I am a Betty. I'm from Limpopo. <laughs> What's up, y'all? Welcome to the Mamu G Show. Today we're going to be speaking about languages. Two articles that I'm going to be talking about. One is from the former Gauteng Premier, Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam. Sam, Sh Sam Shilowa talking about how other languages are more equal than other languages and as well as Uni UNISA ruling court case where Afri Forum won that Africans should be reinstated over there okay so I know you're gonna be telling me that hey Sam Shiloh now he's talking about how the Tsonga language is not being represented enough and Fenda is not being represented enough. What was he doing because he was the premier of Gauteng? Which would then definitely make him one of the people who would then would be in the National Executive Committee and all of that, you know? And uh, isn't he the gentleman who was also uh, duking it all out? with uh, Mr. Musiwa Terra Lekota for to see who's the champ, to see who's gonna be the leader of COPE. You remember the beef which broke down the political party COPE down and today they just having less than three people in the, in the parliament you know and uh, nevertheless here's what he was talking about here mr shiloh i'm just gonna read highlights of the excerpts of his article it's from News 24, 2nd July. Mbazima Shilowa. Well, he starts talking about the formation of the ANC 1912. Sought amongst other to unite all Africans to fight for their rights and freedoms in the land of their birth and against land disposition, racism, tribalism. As the founder of the ANC Pixley, Ga Isaac Aseme. Right? So, his article basically talks about, like I said before, Fenda language as well as Tsonga language. So, he also speak about how the Tsonga communities would uh, change their surname, okay? Um, in order for their surname to maybe sound like Sipedi and other surnames sounds to sounds like um, um, Isizulu, all right? Let me get to it. And I must say that in this republic, obviously, the Tsonga speaking community, it's, uh, you know, in all definition, uh, one of the minority, minority uh, population group in the republic. Let me read some of these excerpts here. It says, Throughout the apartheid years, Vatsonga were regarded as people of lesser tribe, leading some to hide their identity or real surnames. 
Chitonga became anathema in their homes. This led BKM Tombeni, the then representative of Wazonga in the Rift, to pen a series of articles under the heading, Why do we look down upon ourselves? He extolled Wuzonga, calling on Wuzonga to be proud of their heritage. In the same vein, B.J. Masebenza penned a poem titled Shinkloni, or Porcupine. He too was writing about how Wuzonga had become adept at hiding their origins, depending on the situation. Munwanati, Munwanati became Mkwanazi. Shilowa became Silowa, and Ngoveni decided to use Ngobese as a surname. Matter of fact, um, in my neighborhood, where I come from, we have the Silowas in terms of surname, you know. And uh, yeah, all along, I, I thought the, the Silowas are the petty. So I'm learning a little bit today from. Um, Mr. Shilowa. The article continues. During the xenophobic attacks in 2008, someone told me that as a premier, I should tell Vazonga to leave Duduza and the country. When I asked him if that included Paul Mashatile and myself, he responded that we couldn't be Vazonga as we were in leadership position. And also here, I thought Mashatile is a, it's a baby. Same name. We've got the the Mashatile, so I guess this is what um, Mr. Shilo was saying. Also, on the articles, he continues talking about how the Broadcasting Corporation of South Africa, the SABC, also, you know, despite having our home languages, um, radio stations, um, um we also have uh you know that's just about it we don't have um television programs that are in sitonga or television programs or movies that are in 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 uh uh vendor language so he says here in the article when the sabc established its african station in 1960s referred to as Radio Bantu, Shizonga and Tivebda were the last to be serviced in 1965. Even then they shared time slots on alternative days for two hours in the morning and few hours in the evening. It was only later that each were allocated only frequencies. In democracy, the two languages have been relegated to the status of offense, sharing limited times on alternative days on television while there is a Chivenda Shopi Movango. Nothing exists for Bazonga. Giani, land of blood, was not extended or replaced when it came to an end. How children are expected to believe that their language matters when they do not hear or see it spoken on TV is beyond me. No wonder many struggle to hold a conversation in Shizonga. They prefer to converse in English. It is lack of political will from the government to insist that all languages be treated equal as outlined in the Freedom Charter, that all national groups shall have equal rights. So, yeah. He also continues here, talking about the CRL. It is the same with Commission for the Promotion of Protection of Cultural, Religious, and Linguistic Communities, who seem more concerned about the antiques of wayward pastors who instruct their followers to eat grass and drink petrol than the rights of linguistic communities. If government is committed to promotion of all languages on TV, why is Chitonga not part of the languages used to call on the public to follow anti-COVID-19 health guidelines of washing hands, sanitizing, wearing of masks, and keeping physical distance, does the language policy of the Department of Health exclude Shizonga? So yeah, and the articles goes on and on and on and on and on. So, which brings me to the issue of importance of languages. My take is that 
we need not only have to see all our 11 languages on television in terms of movies, series, sports, and so forth. I beg your pardon. We need to see all our traditional languages from from the ground, be it kindergarten slash crash, primary school, high school, and universities, which brings me to the case of the Afri Forum against the University of Free State. Remember, the University of Free State was taken to court by the Afri Forum, right? The Afri Forum went to court to fight that Africans be reinstated in the University of Free State, right? So the court ordered UNISA to prominently publish on its website and in three major, major Africans newspapers in South Africa, as well as in an email to all its students, a notice containing a full list of the modules that were on offer in Africans S at 28 April 2016, offering all prospective students for the next academic year admission in such modules as presented on the first year level. The university should also offer all existing students if they were enrolled in any one of those courses or would have enrolled for the subsequent year courses available in Africans but had perforce to follow the module in English. I guess uh, this article should say perforce to follow the module in English. A choice to enroll on the basis that they may follow the module in Africans until completion of their studies. The article also, this is where it talks about um, accommodating native languages. The fact the Supreme Court of Appeal delivered this ruling is of great interest. It is the highest court that has yet ruled in favor of Africans education on tertiary level. The court's order against UNISA further confirms the moral high ground of students who demand the right to education in their native language. It is important that it is eventually acknowledged that access to tertiary education must be extended to not only create room for English first language speakers, but to also accommodate more native languages. So, coming to tertiary institutions. You look at countries like China, which is obviously a communist country, but what they're doing is their country folks, their countrymen, okay, are learning in their own languages. No, they're doing their mathematics in their languages, in their Mandarin and all of that. And where else? This is not what we're doing. And so far, obviously, the majority of black people in South Africa uh, still go to schools in their neighborhood, in their villages, in their township. And if you take it province by province, Eastern Cape, rural school, all those people speak Isikosa in their neighborhood. But you go to high school, mathematics is done in English. Um, your biology, your your science, and so forth would then be done in Isikosa, you know? rather would, would, would then be done in, in English rather than their home languages. The same things in Limpopo, Venda, uh, Tsonga, and Siberi. 
as uh, the home languages are then not used to study your mathematics, to study your science. These are done in, in, in English. And it gets worse because now, as uh, more and more people get educated and get enough money to take their kids to your private schools, there are just literally no private schools where people are able to speak their home languages. It's English, okay? So now, why can't, say for instance in Limpopo, you have people who then start having the, you, they, they care, crash or kindergarten that are just you know having the high standard of of of, of private education or even if when when people are taking their kids to all these private schools where they just speak english throughout and as a result lose their home languages why can't we have you private schools where people are then be able to be taught their home languages. You can have a um, private tutors or an institution where if you're in, say in KZN and uh, you want your kid to retain their um, home language, then you find that maybe in, in those suburbia, if you're staying in those areas, you find that there are institutions where you can still take your school. You take your kids after school to learn their home languages, be it Zulu, if it's in Western Cape or Eastern Cape, be in Skosa, if it's Limpopo, for them to learn speaking uh, uh, Venda, Tonga, Sibedi, you know, in Northwest, then that would be uh, Tswana and so forth. Because this is not what's happening, and if that happens, if we build that from the from the from the ground up in terms of kids speaking their own home languages, you know, studies shows that it makes it easier for kids to be able to comprehend and learn in their in their mother tongue. You don't have to receive something in English then goes to your brain where you interpret it into your mother tongue and bring it back to be interpreting and, 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 and making it as an, as an output with English. It just makes it easier and simpler that way. So this, this win by, by Afri Forum should not be seen, you know, for, for most race betas out there. This should not be seen as something where as you can remember, we have a, 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 a bad history where uh, black communities were then forced to uh, be taught in Africans in their schools. Right now, since we're a free nation over 24 years, we need to be inspired by the fact that the African speaking communities got still, they have their primary school high school and in tertiary institution. Remember there's another uh, private uh, tertiary institution that is getting built now for those who want to be able to learn in Africans. We should do the same thing, okay? We should aspire to have schools, your primary school from kin kindergarten to high school to tertiary institution that speak your mother tongue, you know? A full, Sipedi speaking university, a full uh, uh, vendor speaking university, a full uh, Tsonga slash uh, Shangani uh, speaking universities. That's what we should aspire to. But you see, this article of uh, the former premier of Gauteng, Mbazima Shilowa also, could be taken by your African nationalist. I can't even say African nationalist because to be a nationalist, you must be 
then be in love with your own country. So it will be a continental nationalist, I guess, no word for that, who are then going to say that, no, we don't like uh, Mbazema Shiloh's article uh, lamenting the fact that Sitonga and uh, Shivenda languages are not getting a niche, you know, in this huge slice of South Africa in terms of languages that are showing movies, series, uh, and so forth, you know. They would say, no, don't talk about this. If you talk about this, then you're bringing an issue of tribalism. We're busy trying to unite as Africans now. And and also we do have issues of xenophobia. You see all these people who are saying now they want to prioritize their countries first before other countries. And those are xenophobic. And now all of a sudden now you want to come with your tribalism here. You know, we should... We should uh, be able to tell race baiters and all of those other people that you can still chew gum and walk at the same time okay all these things could still be done all at the same time we should then be able to say that our languages should be promoted should count we should not be saying we've got our constitution allows us to speak uh, 11 official languages where else right now you're getting your COVID 19 sms's in english okay in english matter of fact people are getting sms's in english on their phone on their phones who can't speak or read or understand English. I mean, this could have been done regionally, at least. In your, if you are in, in deep rural Northwest there, surely you can get a COVID-19 message in, in a form of SMS. If you're in deep rural Eastern Cape, surely you can get a closer SMS talking about COVID-19 or deep rural KwaZulu Natal, Zulu SMS telling you about COVID-19, of how you should wash your hands and uh, what are the symptoms of uh, COVID-19 in your mother tongue. If you are in deep rural Guiani, you should surely you could get these uh, messages in, in, in Sitonga but it's not happening. So as much as, especially the, the, the former premier lamenting that the government is not moving ahead, I, I think uh, we shouldn't now, we should not look into government in order for, you know, individual uh, groups to be able to start their stuff. If you've got some deep pockets you can start now and stop talking and stop complaining. You could start now and say, hey, I am firstly now in my village starting state-of-the-art private school of which the government has got nothing to do with it. You know? Then that's how it, it starts. I know organizations like the EFF also spoke about starting a tertiary institution. Obviously, socialist, Marxist, uh, it's a start. Uh, the Africana communities are now starting their private uh, institution because of uh, they were losing battles in terms of everyone saying, hey, we're coming to your neighborhood. We, we're here now. We don't want to be taught in your school in Africans, and this is a, a public school. We want English up in this place. So now they starting the private uh, African school. And the same should apply to people of um, who speak other languages to be able to start that. 
to improve education in our communities. And we'll be saving money because you have a lot of people who takes their kids each and every Monday to Friday traveling from townships to um, suburban areas for their kids to get better education. Where else? Well, obviously the government is failing and I don't personally think it's a priority for the government to make our kids to be better educated, you know? Because you have to have a folder of people who still want to vote for the same political party because if you suppose if they educate more people, people will then be able to make better decisions that concerns them. You see, if you're not suffering, if you're suffering, the only thing that you'd be concerned uh, for is to get your sasa, a payment, a little bit of water three times in a month. But if you then are educated, you're working, you're middle class, your priorities are going to be different. You're also going to be starting to complain about uh, potholes and be looking at political parties that would then be able to assist you with potholes, you know? So, hence, with, hence you, our education system talks about people getting 30%. You know, if you get 30% as a pass rate, you definitely are not going to make it to a tertiary institution. You, you, you're you just going to be a working class individual, a working class that uh, the communists and socialists love, you know, socialist, communist, ANC, working class, socialist, communist, working class for EFF, COSATU, socialist, communist. So you'll be a working class, a voting folder that would continue to make all these political parties to always have leverage, you know? So that's just my take on the issue of languages. Thank you for watching the Mamuji show and I'm out.